Hey, dear friend, this video is going to be really straightforward. I'm going to show you how to get started with ChatGPT. So if you've never used it before, this will take you all the way from how to sign up and the five things you need to do when you first jump in to make sure your experience is amazing. So first things first, you need to go to chatgpt.com and you'll get this lovely interface here. And then we will go to sign up because obviously if you've not done this before, this will be your first time. You've got a few options. You can enter your email address or you can make it easy and use your Apple, Microsoft or Google account. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'll let you complete that piece. What will happen is you will be sent a email to say your account has been set up. You also need to authenticate it. So you'll be given a link or a code to then make sure that your account is verified. And then once you're in, you'll go to the next screen. So now you're gonna land on a screen that looks a little bit like this. For context, I am using a paid plan, but a lot of the paid plan features are now available for everyone for free. So a few things to note when we get started. One is ChatGPT will always give you these kind of idea prompts to get your juices flowing. Sometimes even if they are non-relevant, it's good just to click on them to see the type of conversations that ChatGPT can have with you and give you some inspiration. But we're going to look at a few things. So the first thing is in the bottom here, we've got our really simple input feature. So what we're able to do here is enter any of our conversational prompts with ChatGPT. We can upload images, files by clicking on the little upload attachment section here. And then you can see we've got a few things up here. So one here, we can access all of our settings, which we're going to dive into in a minute. Over here, we can choose the model. So I think this is the same for free users. So ChatGPT 3.5, I, I wouldn't bother using that. It's not very good. ChatGPT 4 and also 4O as well, which apparently stands for Omni. I think people have been telling me. You can use that. It's probably best to use either ChatGPT 4 or ChatGPT 4O. And what you can also see is this temporary chat feature. Here. So I'm going to separate video on this, but if you are a security conscious individual, temporary chat is quite interesting because you can toggle this on and how it works is that you're able to have a conversation that ChatGPT shouldn't save and won't be used to train its model. And then our last two elements here, so really simply new chat, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? And then here is our sidebar. So our sidebar is where we can have our GPTs, where we can have our previous conversation history as well, if you are saving your conversation history. But let's focus on some things you definitely need to do before you get started with ChatGPT. So first things first, we're going to go over to our little account setting here. And we get all these options. So one is you can see your plan. So I'm on a paid plan. So here it says I'm already on plus, but I can upgrade to team if I want to. If you want a free plan, you'll get this bit here that says you can upgrade to plus for $20 a month. And then if we go back, what we can then see is that we have this element of my GPTs. So on a free plan, you can use the purpose-built AI assistants called GPTs. However, you cannot create them yet. If you want to create a GPT, you will need to have a paid account. As a bonus, if you are interested, in creating your own GPTs. I have a free GPT builder course that you'll be able to find the link for wherever you are watching this video. The next thing that we'll do is look at this customized chat GPT functionality. So why this is interesting is because instead of giving chat GPT loads of information about you before you begin a conversation, you can just create what used to be called custom instructions. And in here, what you're able to do is tell chat GPT two things. So one is, what does it need to know about you to provide better responses? And the second is, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So there's no kind of like great as all time template to use for this. Just enter how you like responses to come back to you. How do you want to format it? What's the structure like? And also looking at what you want to share in order for ChatGPT to know more about you. So that might be in the top one, just talking about your role, what you do, what you're looking to achieve. And of course, as I said, letting it know what you want it to do. And here, what you're also able to do is say, if you want the capabilities of being able to create images with Dali, to look at code, uh, to look at having the internet access as well. So that's pretty straightforward. For some users, what you're able to do is turn on memory as well. I haven't got that feature yet. I think you will be able to do that in free too. But let's take a look at our settings menu. So a couple of things. You can change your theme. If you're a dark mode fan like me, definitely do that immediately. If you're a coder and you want to show coding when you're doing data analysis work, turn that on. Choose your language if you need to. If you want to look at chats you've archived, you can do that here. If you want to archive all of your chats that you've got, you can do that here as well. Now, in terms of speech, so ChatGPT does have voice capabilities via phone and the Mac app as well. So you could just go on here and you can choose the voice that you'd like to converse with. Data controls, really important. So let's talk about these. So you have the option to not send data back to OpenAI to improve the AI models for everyone. How you can turn this off is if you just click here and you can just click this little green bit, then that will not give anything back and that will turn to off. What you're also able to do is manage any links that you've shared to chats as well, because you're able to share chat links and I'll show you how to do that. 
and you can export your data. Another thing to be able to do is that if you're a paid plan user, you'll be able to build GPT. So you can have your own builder profile. I won't go into that though, because I'm going to assume that a lot of people here are using a free account. Then finally, security. So from a security perspective, what you'll be able to do is enable multi-factor authentication, which I definitely recommend you do. So you can use a authentication app or use your email to authenticate every time you're logging in just to be secure. And if you need to log out of all devices, you can do that. So when you first get started, make sure to go through that menu, customize it to how you want to work with it. Now, getting on to the good stuff. So if we want to start working with ChatGPT, what we'll do is, is go in to the box here, and then we can just start having a conversation. So let's take an example and say, can you tell me about the LinkedIn Learning 2024 report what were the biggest insights for learning leaders so this is how we start a conversation and there's loads of prompt templates out there if you want to get really nerdy i have loads of videos already that focus on prompt templates and frameworks and the best ways to work with these tools so take a look at those but what we're seeing here is that we put in a very simple conversation or conversational input to start off with and then what we're doing here is getting all of our response. What I would call to is this lovely bit in the top here where it gives us our sources. So you can see here, we've got all of the sources where the information is picked up. We can now go on here and we can see the sources that are here. So we can validate those sources, which is key to do. What you didn't see in my custom ChatGPT instructions is I asked it to give me three follow-up questions after every bit of conversation. So what we're going to do here is let's look at number three and then I'll say, tell me more about number three and then if you're using this for work or even using it for personal purposes what you're also able to do is share your chats so at the top right of your screen here you can see the share chat piece so we can just click share chat and then what will happen is that after chat gpt has stopped going through the response that it's doing right now so it should do that in a couple of seconds what we'll get is a very easy link and even kind of like a template that we can share with other people so it's done this here so I can create a link and then I can just hit, hit that link, give it to a friend, and then that'll bring them to exactly the search that I'm doing here. So really great if you're doing analysis or any type of collaborative work. And as you can see, the responses are pretty good, even though I've misspelled some stuff up here. And you can see that ChatGPT has given me a, a pretty concise output. And you're able to continue to play with this, get it in the format that you want, even get PDF files, doc files that you can export it with. So as a beginner, those are the main things that you need to know to get started so if that has been helpful as they always say drop me a comment leave a like it really does help the work that we're doing here in terms of trying to educate people how to be smarter with ai and i will see you in the next one